In the annals of Wild West history, there are few characters as notorious and terrifying as Frank Stilwell. A man of indomitable will and cruelty, he earned a reputation as the most callous outlaw to ever roam the border. His name caused terror in the hearts of law-abiding citizens. Who is Frank Stilwell really? What made him such a merciless killer and how was he able to evade justice for so long? In this video, we delve into the life and crimes of this notorious character, uncovering the dark heart of a man whose name will forever be associated with violence and terror. Frank C. Stilwell was born in Iowa in 1856, the son of William Henry Stilwell and Charlotte B. Sarah Winfrey. His family moved to the Kansas Territory when he was young, settling near Palmyra on the Santa Fe Trail. It was here that Frank would spend most of his youth watching as the frontier widened and conflict with the Native Americans escalated. In 1863, when Frank was seven years old, his parents divorced. William died with three sons, Jack, Millard, and Frank, while Charlotte married two girls, Elizabeth and Mary. It was a difficult time for Frank, as he struggled to accept his parents' separation. Frank's father, William, served in the Union Army during the Civil War. He was private in Company B, 18th Missouri Volunteer Infantry, under the command of General William Tecumseh Sherman. William participated in Sherman's infamous March to the Sea, which helped end the war. His brother Simpson, Comanche Jack Stilwell, is an Indian fighter, scout, deputy marshal of the United States, police judge, and United States commissioner. His brother Frank is known for his tough stance on crime and his unwavering dedication to justice. In 1877, Frank and his brother Simpson traveled to Anadarko, Indiana Territory to Prescott, Arizona Territory. While in Prescott, Frank worked at a nearby Miller's Ranch. It is here that he will commit his first act of violence. On October 18, 1877, Frank argued with the newly hired chef, Jesus Vega. The argument grew increasingly fierce and Frank, in a fit of rage, took a gun and shot Vega in the lung, killing him. This incident will set the stage for Frank to sink into a life of crime. Frank was later acquitted on the grounds of self-defense. After the first shooting, Frank left Miller's ranch and began working as a teammate for C.H. Ham Light. Frank later claimed and mined in Mojave County, but his mining projects would also be marked with violence. On November 9, 1879, Frank disputed the mining claim with Colonel John Van Houten. The dispute turned violent and Van Houten was brutally beaten with a rock. He died of his wounds and Frank Stilwell and James Cassidy were charged with murder. Despite the charges, Frank and Cassidy escaped the grand jury indictment due to a lack of evidence. But this is not the end of Frank's troubles. In the 1880 census, Frank listed himself as 24 years old and lived in Charleston, working as a firefighter. Frank also reports that he was born in Texas, but this could be a lie. Frank has many times changed his identity and falsified information about himself. On September 8, 1881, a passenger leg on the Sandy Bob Line in the Tombstone area bound for Bisbee, Arizona, was robbed. Masked robbers on their way to Bisbee, Arizona. They robbed all of the passenger's valuables and stole a safe worth about $2,500. The driver overheard one of the robbers use the word road to describe the money, which prompted Virgil Earp and his team to track down the robbers. While under arrest, Fred Dodge, an undercover agent for Wells Fargo and Company, discovered an unusual shoe print left by someone wearing custom repaired high heels. Earps tracked the shoe to a shoe repair shop in Bisbee, which was known to offer wide leg boots, and they were able to link the fingerprint to Frank Stilwell. When Stilwell arrived at Bisbee with his partner, Pete Spence, he was arrested by Virgil Earp, Wyatt Earp, and Billy Breckenridge for evidence gathered earlier. Judge Wells Spicer placed a $7,000 settlement on Stilwell to be paid by C.H. Ham Light. At the preliminary hearing, Stilwell and Spence presented several witnesses supporting their alibi. The use of the word sugar to describe money and unique shoe prints was not enough to convict Stilwell, and Judge Spicer dropped the charge due to insufficient evidence, as he did to Doc Holliday earlier that year. Despite the lack of evidence, Many historians believe that Frank Stilwell was actually involved in the Sandy Bob Line robbery. 
In the wild west of Arizona, tensions run high as the Yerp brothers, Virgil and Wyatt, continue their relentless pursuit of the notorious cowboy gang. On October 13th, just two weeks after Frank Stilwell was acquitted, Virgil, as Deputy Marshal of the United States, filed new federal charges against Stilwell and his accomplices, Pete Spence, for interfering with a mail carrier. Earps believes Stilwell and Spence are responsible for a series of robberies, including the recent Sandy Bob Line robbery. Both were immediately taken to the territorial prison in Tucson to await trial. While Virgil was away in Tucson, he sent his brother Wyatt to take his place as assistant city marshal at Tombstone. But the Cowboys see this as an opportunity to strike back. On October 18th, Frank McLaurie, friend of Stilwell and Spence and a member of the Cowboy gang, confronted Morgan Earp, another member of the Earp family, and warned him that if they tried to capture his friend again, they will be killed. The situation is tense, and the newspapers are fanned into flames by reporting inaccurately. They claimed that Stilwell and Spence were arrested for another stage robbery near Contention City on October 8th, although both were in custody in Tucson at the time. This leads to the erroneous conclusion that Earps is targeting innocent men and that Stilwell and Spence are being falsely prosecuted. The case was eventually dropped due to insufficient evidence, much to Earps and the citizens of Tombstone. But the Cowboys will soon learn that the law isn't something to break, as the stage has been set for a showdown at the OK Coral. The day after the brutal assassination of Morgan Earp, investigator Dr. H. M. Matthews launched a tense investigation. Marietta Duarte, the wife of notorious outlaw Pete Spence, made a shocking confession that her husband had returned home just an hour after the shooting along with Frank Stilwell, Indian Charlie, Frederick Bode, and an unidentified accomplice. She also revealed that her husband threatened her with force if she divulged any information to the authorities. Witnesses confirmed that Frank Stilwell was seen fleeing the crime scene. It is believed that Stilwell, Frederick Bode, Fries and Florentino Indian Charlie were all involved in the assassination of Morgan Earp. Meanwhile, Pete Spence surrendered to be guarded behind prison. Faced with a broken legal system, Wyatt Earp believes he needs to deal with the problem on his own. Earp believes that the only way to avenge the deaths of his brothers is to track down the attackers and kill them. The Earp brothers have been targeted by a group of ruthless outlaws, and Wyatt knows he can't count on the courts to bring justice. With a heavy heart, Wyatt is willing to risk anything to ensure that his brother's killers pay the ultimate price. The tension between Earps and the Cowboys was at its peak. On March 20th, Wyatt Earp received word that his brother Virgil was being targeted by Frank Stilwell, Ike Clanton, Hank Swillen, and another Cowboy. They are planning to kill Virgil to avenge the death of their friend at the OK Coral. Wyatt knew he had to act quickly so he assembled a team of deputies, including Warren Earp, Doc Holliday, Turkey Creek Jack Johnson, and Sherman McMaster, along with Virgil and his wife Allie, board the train to Tucson. They were all fully armed, determined to protect Virgil at all costs. When they arrived in Tucson, Wyatt and his group saw Stilwell and the Cowboys. The tension could be felt, and Virgil later told the San Francisco Examiner, most of the first men we met on the platform were Stilwell and his friends, armed with weapons. They joined the crowd as soon as they saw me being escorted, and the boys took me to the hotel for dinner. During dinner, Wyatt and his team watched Virgil and Allie, ready for action at any moment. As the train left the station, gunshots rang out. Witnesses saw armed men fleeing but did not identify anyone. Wyatt later claimed that he had seen Stilwell and Ike Clanton, and that when he and his men approached, the two men fled. Stilwell staggered and Wyatt caught him. In a story published in the Denver Republic, Wyatt testified that he shot Stilwell as he tried to push the barrel of Earp's shotgun away. Ike Clanton managed to escape justice and went to the press to tell his story. He testified that he and Stilwell had gone to Tucson to clear their names from federal charges, related to Stilwell's involvement in the robbery of the Bisbee 8 in 1881. But that was not the real reason for the robbery. Their trip. It is later revealed that the real motive behind their journey is to get revenge on Virgil Earp, who they believed played a role in Stilwell's arrest. 
Ike also testified that Stillwell had disappeared from the hotel before he was found dead near the tracks with multiple gunshot wounds. However, witnesses reported seeing Stillwell and his gang armed with weapons on the platform, waiting for Virgil to arrive. Some say that Clanton and Stillwell were at the train station to meet a witness named McDowell, who would testify before a grand jury. When they realized that the Earps was there, they knew that trouble was brewing. Stillwell's body was discovered the next day along the tracks riddled with bullet holes. Eyewitnesses report seeing Clanton and Stillwell together before the shooting. It has been suggested that Stillwell's poor shooting skills led to his untimely death. One thing is for sure, the Earp brothers have become the target of ruthless cowboys who will use no means to seek revenge. Earps know that they must stay vigilant and protect themselves. The Wild West is really wild, and Earps is right there in it. The funeral of Frank Stillwell, the man accused of being involved in the assassination of Morgan Earp, was a somber event. On March 28, 1882, the Tucson Weekly Citizen reported that Stillwell's coffin had been delivered to the grave by an express carriage without an escort present. It was a sad and lonely ending for a man who lived a full life of violence and crime. Stillwell was originally buried in the old city of Tucson Cemetery, but when the cemetery was moved, most of the residents were reburied in a mass grave at Evergreen Cemetery in Tucson. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos.